Okay, we're going to go on to our first um, story, and it's about the Anjanette Young case. For those real quickly who don't know, Anjanette Young is a woman who was alone in her apartment, changing in the midst of changing, actually, when her house was raided through by a, uh, the Chicago Police Department through a search warrant. They didn't do the basic groundwork needed to know that they were raiding the wrong apartment. <laughs> Why would they do that? And she was naked when they raided her. There's body cam footage. So now there's a new report out from CBS2, which we're going to watch. It's about three minutes. And it's about how the city is now moving to basically dismiss the lawsuit by Anjanette Young. So we're going to watch this clip. I'm going to come back and talk about it and give you some, um, some context that's missing from the report. The original, this original story broke by Dave Savini from Channel 2 also. Breaking the story with uh, body, getting body cam footage uh, related to that um, incident. So let's watch it and we'll be back in three minutes to talk about it. Goes on, and her home was wrongly raided by Chicago police. But more than two years later, Ann Jeanette Young's case is no closer to being resolved. And said today, the city asked a judge to dismiss her case altogether. CBS investigator Megan Hickey live in our Streetside studio. Megan, this move comes despite months of public promises from Mayor Lori Lightfoot to make things whole. Right, Brad, as you know, the CBS2 investigators first exposed that horrific body camera video of the raid of the raid that sparked national attention. Mayor Lori Lightfoot at the time vowed to make it right, but six months later and her law department is trying to get this case thrown out. The video, the video speaks extraordinarily loudly. Back in December, Mayor Lori Lightfoot responded publicly to the outcry over the wrong raid of Anjanette Young's home. We first reported on it in 2019, but it wasn't until the body camera video was released that the public really understood the injustice that Young suffered. Where there are wrongs, they must be righted, and we will do so with del all deliberate speed. Deliberate speed has not translated into anything for Anjanette Young. This week, we reported that settlement discussions had broken down completely, with Young accusing the city of dragging its feet. A spokesperson for the city said they had no choice but to litigate and today filed this motion. The city argues that the case should be dismissed because the lawsuit failed to challenge the underlying validity of the search warrant. The city's lawyers say CPD executed a validly issued search warrant that was authorizing officers to enter her apartment. Hardly the same message the mayor told us again back in December. Clearly a specific set of mistakes were made. The city called the fact that Young was unclothed regrettable. Chicago police search warrant. Go. But the valid search warrant argument conflicts with inconsistencies that the CBS2 investigators uncovered with the warrant. Officers failed to follow their own directives. The officer who obtained the warrant failed to do an independent investigation. If he did, he would have found that the suspect actually lived next door and was on electronic monitoring at the time of the raid. Those were facts that CPD could have easily determined, but didn't even check. I don't know how this person pointed out your apartment. Also important to keep in mind, in April, the Civilian Office of Police Accountability said its nearly 18-month investigation of the raid produced nearly 100 allegations of misconduct against more than a dozen officers who took part. Now, the city argued in the motion that the officers conducting the raid had reasonable belief they would find an armed felon, which is why they say they handcuffed her while they were looking through her home. Brad? Megan, how are Miss Young and her attorney responding to this motion to dismiss the case altogether? Right, so they were made aware of the city's plans in an email a few days ago, so they were expecting this to happen, but they said in a statement, it's a sad day for Miss Young and the city of Chicago. The city declined to comment further on this case. We'll have both of their statements on our website. Just head to this story. All right, CBS2 investigator Megan Hickey. Megan, our thanks. Okay. So what in the name of God is going on? Okay, so there's a few things. One, this is leverage by the Lightfoot administration in the city to push Young to settle. That I'm convinced of. Also, here's a little more context to what's going on here that doesn't really make the news a lot um, when you're talking about this story, unfortunately. And that is this case... The original lawsuit, 
and I think it was filed in federal court, the original lawsuit filed by Ms. Young was thrown out of court. The one ongoing now is the second one. And that is why the tapes were leaked to CBS. All right? That's why the tapes were leaked. I'm not sure. Let me back up and say, yes, department policy was violated. But when you hear the city say, well, it wasn't illegal. They entered your apartment legally. By statute, by law, about what they've got to do to the courts, they probably did it in a way that is legal, but yet may be against CPD policy. Right? Those, can be, those things can happen at the same time. They're not mutually exclusive. So that's why they're pushing to get it dismissed. The first one has already been dismissed. This is the second case. This is the second try at this. That is why this is in, this case made it to CBS News and why that's been a, such a big push in the, in the court of public opinion because they not, may not be able to win in court. So what are they doing? They're doing what they can to push the city to settle, which is fine. Obviously, something happened there, and she deserves to be um, um, made whole as much as possible about what happened. So I'm not sure the city lawyers are actually necessarily technically wrong in this, in their argument. Now, what about the Lightfoot administration? What about the mayor herself talking about how we're going to settle this, we're going to get to the bottom of this, we're going to do this, we're going to take care of this? This is the same crapola that you would hear from Rom, the same crapola you'd hear from Daly. This is no different. In the public opinion, in the, in the media, we say one thing. In court, we do another. This is just how they operate. It's how the city operates. Now, part of what the city is also doing, ladies and gentlemen, is <laughs> making sure that as best they can, they're not held liable from other people for other wrong raids where they got the warrant as legally as they could like, you know, but they, they hit the wrong place. If they pay Miss Young a million dollars, how many people do you think <laughs> are waiting in line here to get paid for wrong raids? It's not an uncommon thing in Chicago. So they're also thinking about that. All of this is tossed in. All of this is in the mix here. They're trying to prevent... They may pay out young, and I think they probably will in the end, but it's going to either have a secrecy agreement or to it, or the city's not going to claim that they did anything wrong. Not, they're not going to have to admit to doing anything wrong. And that is to protect future liability from other future, from bad raids that have already happened and bad raids that are about to happen. And there are going to be, ooh, there are going to be some that are definitely are going to happen. There's no doubt it's, com it's coming down the line. Now, once again, I harp about this all the time on the show. This is the difference between policy and legislation. The police department can violate police policy. It's a disciplinary. The only thing that that does is whether or not the, those officers should be fired. It has nothing to do with anything like what the police did was illegal. This is why you need legislation, the Anjanette Young Ordinance being one example thereof, so that... When they do these things, they're actually breaking the law if they don't do them right. Don't worry about breaking CPD policy. Who cares about that? They never listen to that. There's almost no accountability in that. We're working on a project to prove how horrible that uh, liability has been over the last 40 years. I mean, the accountability is. They're not worried about that. You have to worry about breaking state law and city ordinance. That's why we need a city and state legislation. This is the perfect, perfect example of that reality. We need legislation. We can't count on policy. They'll break policy every chance they get. Now listen, someone should FOIA every, fo every um, maybe we'll do it, every single warrant application from that team, whatever team rated that house, they should go and get every one they've ever done. Because I guarantee you, if they did this one so poorly, where they never looked to make sure if the person was in jail or if he was locked up or where he actually was, the person they're trying to arrest in this raid, they didn't just, this isn't a first time. This is probably the 500th time. This is how business is done. That wasn't a mistake. That is how business is done. 
right? So they're not going to, they're going to do everything they possibly can to avoid having to pay out all those other people they've done it to over the years and all the people they're about to do it in the years to come. That's why we need legislation like the Anjanette Young Ordinance. We need state legislation mimicking that to make it felonies to, of, to break the law. I'm convinced that's the only thing you're really, only way you're really going to constrain the police.